Hello, my name is Dr. Abby Angel, President of Friends of the Canadian Institutes of Health Research. The Video History of Medicine in Canada project was created by FCIHR to record and preserve the life stories of major Canadian leaders in science and education over the past half century. This brief video is a tribute to the late Professor Michael Bliss, Canada's most prolific and eminent medical historian, who conducted a dozen video recordings over a 15-year period. To honor his memory, we compiled excerpts from six of his extended interviews and strung them together as a medley of video clips. As this video unfolds, you will witness the evolution of Bliss as an insightful video documentarian, a new role. This presentation begins with some introductory remarks by Bliss at a meeting of the Science Teachers Association of Ontario in 2011. I'm to introduce you to a project that I've been involved in to try to get around the problem of not having good memoirs and biographies and to try to capture the ongoing history of what's happening at the heights of Canadian health research. This is the creation of a video history of Canadian medicine. It's done through a very small organization, the Friends of the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, which is very much the vision of Dr. Angel, who is here this morning. Uh, Abhi decided that it would be a good idea to debrief great Canadian researchers about their careers. Uh, I've done most of the interviewing, as with so much else, this is an enormously uh, interesting learning experience. Uh, we've learned a lot about formatting and technological change. We're gradually creating usable, DV usable DVDs of these interviews. Uh, and we'll soon be able to start posting these on the internet. Normally our interviews uh, include from three to six hours of, uh, of uh, discussion. Take me then through the progress from zoology to becoming a doctor at the University of Manitoba. Also behind the scenes, you're beginning to have discussions about updating the strategic plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was able to be at some of those early meetings that autumn of 97. And it's my memory that that's when you first started talking about, seriously, about the Institute's idea. Be began to, to think about it uh, more seriously, and it was motivated in part by, through, again, friends, mm -hmm. friends of MRC. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Well, when you were going through this period, yeah. you were moving very quickly. I mean, one of the issues was, uh, whether the new institutes would replace the MRC, and at what point had you decided to, in effect, bet the whole council? Was this You're really getting junk. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, this is your story, but I can't help but mention that my father had almost exactly the same experiences doing his internship at Bellevue in the 1920s. And Is that right? Talked about riding the ambulances as well. Um, well, I'll tell you, it, it was part of the culture at that stage. And racing up the, the steps, I did a lot of deliveries, uh, because they were home deliveries. And, but they tried to have somebody there to make sure that if there was a, a problem that they got them into the hospital. Turning to back to Toronto and uh, the building in which we're having these interviews, the Mars Complex, mm -hmm. uh, how do we segue from your involvement with CFI to your very intense involvement with Mars? Uh, it gave the, uh, the research community uh, hope that, uh, that uh, there would be a, a continuing program even though CFI was just set up with a defined amount of money and no assurance that it would be taken beyond the level that was uh, initially appropriated.
Tell me about that era of transplant work, which to people watching you, watching this interview as the years go by will seem like a medieval period or a dinosaur age. Uh, it was really the Wild West. In the 1970s now at Western, you're beginning your uh, attempt to understand and explore the rejection phenomenon. Do you want, can you tell me how that work develops? So you are at New Haven in the, in the 1950s and you are um, uh, taking advantage of opportunities down there, you're anxious to finish. Uh, were you anxious to come home to Canada or did you seriously consider staying in the United States? I considered it. I was actually offered a position in the biophysics department at Yale. And, uh, Tell me, uh, before we go into more detail about the progress uh, and development of your research, tell me more about the Toronto situation as you experienced it when you came back in the 1950s. You've s said a few things about the Ontario Cancer Institute. I have the impression from uh, other memoirs, including Lusa Minovich's, that this was a, a, an almost golden age for young researchers in, in biophysics in Toronto. Is that your, your memory as well? Absolutely. I, I like that. Often in these kinds of research, great research adventures, um, there are times of great disappointment um, when the experiments fall apart, they're on the verge of failing. As you look back on this story in the 60s, it looks as though you didn't have particular crises like that. Um, well, I don't know if one would call it crisis, uh, a, cr a crisis, but we did periodically have policy decisions to make. Would we? With this question, should the young women who are watching this interview, watching these clips, or the young women who sit in the audiences <laughs> as you give interviews, should they be looking for female role models, or should they be uh, gender new indifferent? I think they should be gender indifferent. I think they should be looking for topics, trying to get excited about a field, you know. If we wanted to read about the world you came from, I suppose we'd find it in Mordecai Richler's Absolutely. writings. And Mordecai became a very good friend. Oh, I see. Before, before we talk about the, um, the next stage, after yep. you've, you've published uh, the big article in 65, mm -hmm. uh, l let's double back and talk a bit about um, th the, the broader picture of your life as you're doing this research. Right. Because you're so, ob you're, you're, you're so keen to tell me the story. What I want to know is what was happening the rest the of my rest life. Of the rest of the story. Uh, right. Um, I'd met my wife, Evelyn. Um, in to help further our understanding of the development of healthcare activities in Canada, the Friends of the Canadian Institutes of Health Research has developed a program of video interviews of outstanding leaders in academic medicine and biomedical research. These debriefing exercises, or oral autobiographies, are meant to supplement written memoirs and biographical studies in presenting the lives and work of these distinguished scientists and educators in their own words, from their own mouths, and in a medium that conveys a unique form of immediacy. These are real encounters with real giants of Canadian medicine, talking to us and to generations to come about their lives and their careers, about their quest for excellence. For the friends of CIHR and our sponsors, I'm Michael Bliss.
Friends of CIHR is grateful to our many sponsors for financial contributions and support of the Video History of Medicine project.